Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bermuda. A billion people do not have reliable access to fresh water. The original settlers that came to Bermuda encountered the same issue. One of the main reasons our vernacular architecture evolved the way that it did was to accommodate for that very same problem. Vernacular architecture. It's a term that we use today, but as you know, vernacular normally refers to the native or the endemic. Vernacular architecture is a term that evolved in more recent times to describe what it is I'm about to talk about today. So vernacular meaning the vernacular, the endemic, using endemic materials, architecture design. You would find that the original settlers didn't have the expertise that the originals, the, the uh, original settlers didn't have the expertise that the architects have today. One of our classic Bermuda cottages, as you see, there's the white roof, and the more important part to this exercise is the tank on the side, that little arch, that derm tank. Connecting the tank to the building just as you see in front of you, is a water catchment. Just behind that little wall, there's a water catchment. Originally, prior to those pipes that you see coming down from the roof, originally, that was the way in which the water was collected off, the, off our roofs. This little section right in the middle here that you see, the front right-hand room, was one of the additions put on in later years which necessitated the pipes that you come down now, you see coming down now. Winslow Homer painted this, this, this house, and when he did paint it, I think it looked a bit different from what you would see now. They didn't have that extra room, so they didn't have the need for the pipes that you see going down into the ex existing tank. When the original settlers came, they encountered two amazing materials. One was the Bermuda cedar, which is very strong, it's a, very, it's, a, it's a juniper, it's a very resilient wood, it was ideal for building. They also encountered Bermuda stone, a natural stone that they found here, very soft, easy to cut. They use heavy saws, like you see there, to start the process. They cut into hillsides with tools, as you see here, the saw, the chisel on the top, and the little rake in the back. What ended up was quarries like these, at the same time that they actually built into the land, they used the stone. These hilltops were cut down. That same site, actually, once it's cut down, could be used to build another building in. So it was a good conservation of the actual space itself and a good use of the, the properties. Right at the bottom side, you'd see stone that's been cut out, stacked alongside. You'd see an example here. There's a site slate block there with a little slate in the front that was used for our roofs. The, the man you see just in the middle there, he would tend to have worked in the quarry by himself and produced all of what you've seen there. You would see, think it's impossible, but he would use just a chisel, as you see there, with a long staff and this saw. That's Larry Mills. For the last 30 years, I've been collecting bits and pieces from our vernacular architecture. Why, have I, why did that come about? I think it was just as all of you have this collecting bent, whether it be seashells, whether it be coins. For me, it was bits and pieces of houses that's been going on for 30 years. What you see there, and that's only a small portion of what I have and stored away. These cedar beams that they pulled out of houses, that's a part of a collection that I have. That is an indication of the kind of craftsmanship that went into the vernacular buildings. This one is a combination of all of what you've seen just previously. That roof, part of it, came out of the pile that you just saw that I rescued out of these building sites. Bermuda stone buildings, this is how they came up. You see the roof framing structure. Bermuda stone walls, 
and the white stone slate. All of this, all of the previous, what I've shown you previously, including this picture, which is very important, is how the roofs go together. You have the wood frame structure with the stone slate one inch by 12 inches by 18 inches. This is what we slate our roofs with. Bermuda stone cut entirely out of the earth. As you can see, Masons put this roof together in order to collect rainwater. Bermuda, it's legislated here that every homestead is responsible for their own water supply. The harvesting, collection, and storage of fresh rainwater. This, this is a structure put up in our botanical gardens by the Bermuda government. They realized that it was necessary to continue on and to encourage the continuation of our vernacular architecture because of the involvement of the island. As we know, we tend to grow, and all of the influences that come about from the outside tend to shadow the little buildings that we used to build. So they wanted to prove that if need be, if restoration needed to be done, we can do it. Persons like myself, who have tried to retain the expertise that was left by those who went before us. This building today sits in the botanical gardens. The National Trust, they've done a vigilant job of preserving some of our vernacular buildings. This is a beautiful one, the Rectory or Rectory in St. George. As you can see, and which is consistent throughout this entire presentation, the idea of freshwater harvesting is ever present. Now this little cottage was photographed in the late 1800s. I want you to take particular notice in that little barrel standing next to the lady there. And also the little bucket that's at the top of it. What I'm going to show you is that the collection of water, fresh water, rainwater in Bermuda, was pretty democratic. This photograph was taken a bit later. And as you can see, Bermuda didn't evolve with just little cottages. It evolved into larger houses. But the idea of collecting fresh water, storing it, is just as necessary then as it was when the early settlers came. This is a picture of the roof, a finished roof. What you will see is that little hole there in the corner, surrounded by the guttering, the stern guttering that's put there in order to channel the water into this little hole. Once the water goes down into this little hole in the masonry roof, it ends up with a system like, into a system like this. This is the foundation of a house going up now. You can see the white pipes. All of them lead to that little section in the, on the left, which is one of the systems that's built up and plastered prior to the building of the house. All of those white pipes lead down into the system. Again, a very important link in our rainwater harvesting. Neighbors, Bermuda's always had neighbors. We've always had neighbors. We've always been able to live together. And as you can see, there's a consistency to the style of house that's, that's built. Mind you, while it's changed slightly over the, over the years, there's still that soft approach because of our natural materials that they use. Now, this is an interesting building, quite different from the one that you saw, the little one with the bucket beside it. But the idea and the principle is still the same today. This building's been completed quite recently, and they have made allowances. You may not see it evidently right in the front here, but they have made allowances for the collection of rainwater. As you can see, over the last 350 years, that consistent problem of collecting rainwater has still been attacked. If you decided that you needed to live here in Bermuda, for any of you who may be visiting, you would find that rainwater collection 
is going to become a very important part of your life. Wherever you come from, prior to coming here, if it was legislated that you become responsible for your own rainwater supply, would that sit well with you? Bermuda, the last 350 years, we've had to contend with that problem, and we've successfully overcome it. Even though every summer, myself and everyone else has needed to collect our own rainwater. If I can just slip back, because of the fact that Bermuda is quite a small island, we have to be very cognizant of the way in which we go forward. Every issue matters in Bermuda. Every single issue matters. At the moment, it's fashionable to build on the water side. And I don't blame them. If I was one of the early settlers, probably one of the first things I would do was head for the seesaw. But in fact, the original settlers decided farmland was probably a better idea. Not only was farmland a better idea, it also provided access to those natural materials I was talking about. The white that you see on these roofs, it's something that we all sometimes take for granted. We fly in, and we say, oh, Bermuda's beautiful roofs, and that's what we brag about. Going into the future, there are issues that just might affect that what you see. The issue of solar panels will come up, but I'm sure that will be accommodated. And there are going to be those in the crowd who are clever enough to come up with a solution whereby those solar panels going forward will compete with the white roofs that we have here. Bloomfield and Paget represents one of the, pros one of the prosperous um, results of our prosperity. But again, as you can see, the two units on the side, when they were added, you can't see it right in this photo, but when they were added, accommodations had to be made for the kids who would have gone into that and staff who would have gone into the, those, those, those buildings by way of water collection. They needed to store the extra water that was collected off of those little roofs. We'll get back to this little cottage. And I mentioned the National Trust earlier. The National Trust has done a fantastic job. They have a large stock of buildings, over 100 buildings, that, that they need to look after. Just in front of the lady in the, in the barrel, you'd find the little kid there who today, and there are probably one or two of them in the audience, and what they really need to do is understand this issue of rainwater harvesting and how it's going to take us into the future. Bermuda is especially susceptible to changes in rainfall. Not only Bermuda, but the world at large. Getting back through to the National Trust, its membership is open to all of you who are here. It's necessary that we continue it. It's necessary that we, re we retain the skills that was needed to produce these structures. They didn't have the benefit of a computer, but they had the benefit of the square. This square is just as important to building today as it was when the early settlers arrived. You can do every calculation that you need to build that vernacular structure using this square. I didn't have a computer, and they didn't either. But there's no reason why the world can't progress without the skills that I bring to the table. I think it's very important that the world progresses. It's absolutely important that the world progresses. But I also think it's very important to remember the skills that came before that. Our roofs, um, which are probably the most important thing, it's quite simple. 
the original structures, some of the original structures, or very early structures, but have used a window quite similar to this one. It's very simple, very simple. It's just a wood frame, a solid wood frame, very thick top that started to support the roof, and a seal. This is just a solid side, no mechanics. This sash can quickly pop in. And drop down. If you stick a little something here and lock it, it's probably bur burglar proof. <laughs> Not much has changed. But what has changed are the little working parts that come in the modern windows that stick because of our soul. They create a problem just when we don't need them. <laughs> this is what makes, basically makes our roof what it is. This little roof seat cut here off of this timber. If you can imagine this is seven or eight feet long, this raft of foot is what actually pushes the slate off the side of the roof house so that rainwater can run over. This is the actual basis to our roof structure. This would sit on the window that's built into the side of the house, seat a member, and then this sits right here like that. And that begins our Bermuda roof. What's been replaced today is this with concrete. By could, we need to use concrete. The original cute cottages that you saw that were nice and neat and snug began with that process. And need I remind you, need I remind you, the idea of fresh water capture and preservation is an idea that Bermuda can present to the world if they only look close enough. And one day they're going to need to look close enough. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.